This is JC on a bike, Journal Club on a bike. Today I want to cover a paper by, two papers by Menno Winters Lab and kind of give a mini shout out to Leutke paper as well. This is JC on a bike, Journal Club on a bike. Medial and lateral entorhinal cortex in history have been presumed to be a separate and parallel pathway from the cortex into the hippocampus. And that's what makes them so exciting is that they are equally, equal anatomically. Thank you. Angry people. They are equivalent anatomically in the sense that they send this superficial projection, superficial meaning from the superficial layers. They send a projection to the hippocampus. And that arrangement is, has made them anatomically and functionally sort of a note. A notable circuit. And then the grid cells were found in the medial entorhinal in layer two, where half of this hippocampal projection originates. And grid cells are these really interesting cells that seem to con code a metric for space in a very mathematically crystalline way. And so understanding the local microcircuit of entorhinal cortex, we've had a lot of, of resources bent on this question. And Menno is the, the anatomy wizard of the hippocampal formation. He's the guy who discovered and described the projection from entorhinal cortex to hippocampus. And hippocampus, just for you for you uh, non non-scientists out there, the hippocampus, long story short, is a place that we think is central to memory because when it has been removed from patients, they lose the ability to form new memories. And that's a lot more complicated than that, but let's just say this. The main input from the wrinkly part of the brain comes from the entorhinal cortex. And understanding that and how it's organized will start to help us understand how the hippocampus receives information and then maybe how it processes it. So understanding whether or not and how the lateral and medial entorhinal cortex receive information, processes it, and then put it out to the hippocampus is vital to our understanding of the brain as a whole. And so the structure the structural basis for this is, of course, the anatomy. So who's connected to who? And historically, it's been thought that the lateral and the medial must be like parallel and always because they're so anatomically parallel that they probably are. And, and that hypothesis was tested a few times and it seemed to be confirmed in the sense that it looked like post rhinal cortex projected to MEC because they're close to each other and they border each other. And perirhinal cortex projected to lateral entorhinal cortex. And so the anatomic drawing has always been perirhinal to medial entorhinal. Sorry, perirhinal to lateral entorhinal and postrhinal to medial entorhinal. And the first paper I'm discussing today, very quickly, his Menno has done some painstaking work with physiology and with with tracing to show that the largest projection from post rhinal cortex, parahippocampal cortex in the non primate, non human primate, same region, sends a larger projection to lateral entorhinal than it does to medial entorhinal. And that's figure one. And then in figure two, oh, I don't know what that was all about. Then in figure I see. Then in figure two, they do some physiology where they label the axons from post rhinal with channorhodopsin in lateral entorhinal to show that functionally those synapses are there. 
and they use an electrode to stimulate perirhinal at the same time and demonstrate that cells in lateral interrhinal cortex get input from both postrhinal and perirhinal cortex. Now this changes the canonical circuit that was there and more importantly it starts to suggest that lateral interrhinal gets a lot more varied and interesting inputs than medial does. Medial interrhinal cortex might be mostly visual, where lateral might be the multimodal, multi-sensory input that complements the visual interpretation of space generated by medial interrhinal. So what an interesting change to this circuit, right? If medial doesn't get a bunch of input from all these places, then the generation of grid cells is not dependent on those inputs. Whereas what's going on in lateral, now that's very different. Because these cells seem to be integrating a lot more inputs than medial interrhinal. So, then they, in figure three, they just look at, they look at post-rhinal projections to MEC and show that those are much weaker than those to lateral interrhinal. And then four is a cartoon, kind of revising the circuit, where previously you had two parallel pathways feeding into the hippocampus. Now you have a pathway mostly from vision and then a multi-sensory multi pathway through the lateral interrhinal. So this is complemented by another paper that Menno recently put out where they look in detail at how layer two pyramids are connected to one another. And this is a separate part of this story, but nonetheless it complements because we're still talking about the same superficial layer that projects to the hippocampus in medial and lateral interrhinal. And this connection is central to memory and to hippocampal function and so understanding it is important well historically we've talked a lot about the layer two cells in medial and lateral interrhinal that originate this connection and most of the time in the literature we're referring to stellate cells in medial interrhinal or fan cells in lateral interrhinal, but intermingled among those two populations are pyramidal cells named for their shape. Pyramidal cells that spike differently, look different by their shape, and also express different molecular markers. And because they don't send a uniform, beautiful, giant axonal projection well organized into the hippocampus like the layer 2 stellate and fan cells do, then we've gone under the assumption that they might not project to the hippocampus, but Menno's lab has done some painstaking work injecting in different places in the brain to try and see where these cells are projecting, and it turns out that the calbindin positive pyramidal cells in layer 2 of medial and lateral interrhinal project to different populations of neurons and much more than just the contralateral side, which was what previous literature seemed to suggest was the main job of these. And interestingly, Menno reports that these pyramidal cells project very strongly to the local circuit in which they are embedded. That was also reported very recently by the Leutgeb lab, California, that reported a lot of in vivo data recording from layer two pyramidal cells, but now in vivo. And so I think it's appropriate now because of Menno's second paper to kind of speak about the in vivo side of these pyramidal cells. Menno has just shown in this paper, besides what I just said, that 
pyramidal cells and lateral entorhinal project far wider than the medial entorhinal cells do. The medial entorhinal cells are pretty much locally projecting, so you're not going, oh my god. We don't need a turn signal, right? Because we don't need one. What a C-U-N-T. So besides projecting locally, the MEC layer 2 cells also project to lateral entorhinal, the, the ipsilateral lateral uh, entorhinal, so that's interesting. 80% of the, of the LEC cells project to the local LEC, but interestingly enough, a percentage of these cells also projects to all different places, including the amygdaloid complex, the prefrontal cortex, the olfactory cortex, and and this means that the lateral entorhinal cortex is indeed most likely multimodal simply because it's providing feedback to all those places and the definition of anything that's connected should have some feedback my guess is that medial entorhinal does feedback to places but probably far few places and maybe only those immediate higher order visual places vision uh, centers and not all these other multi-sensory locations that the lateral entorhinal cortex is connected to. So at the same time again what I was going to say was that the Leukeb lab has also shown data from the layer 2 pyramids which number one supports and and confirms the idea that their strongest projection is local. So they are a local excitatory connection, a local excitatory loop in my papers, I showed that the pyramidal cells were getting excitation from the stellate cells, so it could be that the pyramidal cells provide the local excitatory connectivity that a lot of the computational models require for grid cells to work. Could be. Certainly, no one has yet shown any data that undermines my idea that stellate cells are probably embedded in a pure inhibitory network, and if anything, the Lloyd Gebs have shown that even more because of quite a large majority of the responses in, pyramidal, in principal cells of layer 2 in entorhinal, when they stimulate these cells in vivo, they see mostly inhibition. It's not only inhibition, of course. They see excitation and inhibition and a combination of both. But a large portion of the cells which responded with anything when the layer 2 pyramids were stimulated in vivo, they responded with inhibition. So they go to solve this a little bit more in the Leutgeb paper and in figure two they're showing the the general principle cells and the different responses that they get and then in figure three they're going to start looking at different cell types so the first one figure three they look at speed cells and they show that speed cells are what what So, it's crazy, man. They're just, they're lost. They don't know what to do, so they're lost. And their car is too expensive, so. Yeah, you get some. So, they show that speed cells are mostly inhibited, I think. And then they show that strong head direction cells are almost not affected at all and they show that broadly tuned head direction cells don't change their tuning at all when the layer 2 pyramidal cells are stimulated they make a few other observations I think they show that theta is not affected by stimulation of the pyramidal cells you know a lot of these A lot of these 
Phone zombies. Phone zombies. A lot of these observations are not necessarily surprising. That they couldn't interrupt Theta, for example, it's not surprising. I don't think anybody thought that Theta was going to be interrupted by the pyramids in there, too. But it's worth checking. Hey, thanks for joining me on my ride. I tried to do three papers tonight. Um, I may turn out the first paper of, of Menno's Lab separate. Uh, because I added that video done already, but then I thought that, that these three papers kind of went together. So the first paper of Menno's that I mentioned was a paper where they look at perirhinal cortex and postrhinal cortex and those two cortical regions input into the entorhinal cortex. And in previous uh, studies and previous reports, the perirhinal cortex feeds into lateral entorhinal, postrhinal feeds into medial entorhinal. Postrhinal is called parahippocampal cortex in non-human primates, but let's just call it post and peri for now. What they found was that actually postrhinal actually sends a relatively small projection to MEC relative to the large projection that it sends to LEC. And perirhinal still projects to LEC like before. In this paper then they show that physiologically those connections are real and that cells in LEC receive both inputs. That's significant because at one point in time the assumption was that these were parallel separate pathways. Now it seems like more sensory information goes in through the lateral than does through the medial. The second uh, paper I tried to highlight was a paper done by the Leutgeb lab where they look at the layer 2 pyramids, the Calbindon positive pyramids that are in layer 2 and part of this layer that projects to the hippocampus from lateral and medial into rhinal. And within that layer are these stellate cells and fan cells that everybody has known for a long time contribute to this projection. What Menno's lab now shows is that in addition to these pyramidal cells in this layer projecting to the opposite side of the brain, which was one of the only real reports that was out there, they produce a huge local connection. And they also, from the lateral entorhinal, project to other places in the telencephalon, other places in the rest of the brain. Um, that's significant because that suggests that that lateral is giving feedback to those places that the medial entorhinal doesn't. Again, pointing to the multimodal aspect of lateral entorhinal wiring that doesn't seem to be present in medial as much as it was assumed. The next paper then we looked at was the Leutgeb paper. I maybe mixed these two up, but Menno's lab does the anatomy of these layer two pyramids. And then the Leutgeb paper that I report also does the in vivo recordings from it, stimulating these layer two pyramids to see what happens in the local circuit when they do it. Um, if you liked it, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Sorry that the wrap was almost four minutes long, but you know that's how it goes when you do three papers. Take care of yourself and I'll see you next time.